In this lesson, we're going to take a look at how we can utilize alignment tools to line up and change the alignment of text and numbers in our worksheet. So once again, we're working with this very large data set. If you recall, this is the data set that has roughly 51,000 rows. Now I have made some changes to this data set. I've hidden a few of the columns. You can see that we've got quite a few columns hidden just here so that we can see these columns that have values in a little bit better. Now, when it comes to alignment, we're mainly talking about two different things, and that is the position of the text or the numbers within the cell. And if you take a look at the home ribbon, you can see that we have a whole group of tools in this alignment group. So if we work our way through these, you can see that the ones in this top row are top align, middle align and bottom align. So this is dealing with how the text is aligned vertically in the cell. Now this is illustrated a little bit better if I make this first row a little bit taller. So I'm going to drag row one down a little bit and that is going to show you that everything in this first row is aligned to the bottom of the cell. And we can in fact confirm that if we select the row and take a look at our alignment tools, you can see that bottom alignment is highlighted in grey, meaning that that is the one in use. But what I could do is I could choose to align these to the middle, that will move them up, or I could align them to the top of the cell. And I'm going to put mine in the middle. The alignment tools that we have underneath deal with the horizontal alignment. So we can choose to have them left aligned, aligned to the middle or aligned to the right. So currently all of my text is aligned to the left. And it is worth noting that by default, when you enter text into a cell, it is aligned to the left of the cell. But I could choose to align these to the middle or I could align them to the right hand side of the cell. So again, this is very much personal preference. Now, aside from those basic vertical and horizontal alignment tools, we have some other cool things that we can do in this alignment group. So if you check out this little button just here, this is related to the orientation of the text or values that are in the selected cells. So from here, we can rotate our text diagonally or vertically. And as it says in the screen tip, this is a great way to label narrow columns. So what we could do here is we could click the drop down and you can see that we can change the angle of our labels. So I have the heading row selected. I could choose to angle those headings counterclockwise. And you can see exactly what that does. Now I'm going to widen out this row so that those all sit neatly. So this is sometimes a way to make your columns a little bit narrower because these are on a diagonal. We could then double click to auto fit the width of these columns and they take up a lot less space. We have other options underneath here as well. We can angle them clockwise or we can do vertical text. That doesn't look so great and it's quite hard to read. We can rotate the text up. You might want to use that at some points or we can rotate the text down. So this is entirely up to you as to how you want to use this. And if you want to put it back, you just need to deselect the one that you originally selected. Another thing you have in this little group here are indents. So you can choose to decrease the indent or increase the indent. So if I was to increase the indent, can you see it kind of tabs the headers across the cell? So if you need to have that indented effect, you could use these indentation tools. Now, another thing that we have in here is the wrap text option. So we looked at this briefly in another lesson. This allows us to wrap extra long text into multiple lines so you can see all of it. For example, let's take this column just here, column P. Let's imagine that this column is a lot narrower than it currently is. You can see that some of these product names are kind of being hidden because there isn't enough space in this column to accommodate the width of the text. Now we could, of course, drag the column out to give it more space. But if we want to have a much narrower column, but, but we still want to be able to see all of the text, we can simply select the column and click on wrap text. Hi, from everyone at Simon Says It. We hope you're enjoying this training lesson. Please like this video to show your support for the channel. If you want to take your learning further, earn a certificate for this course, and gain access to over 200 courses ad-free, click up there and go to simonsaysit.com. Thanks for watching and back to the course.
And you can see exactly what that does. It wraps the text around, so it breaks the line at the end and wraps it onto another line. So this is fine, just remember that this can give you inconsistent row heights. Because if we take a look at what we have in row two, that all fits nicely on one line, whereas what we have in row three, it needs to wrap around. So this row needs to be a little bit taller. Now the option underneath wrap text is merge and center. And we have a whole video dedicated to this because there are a couple of things that you need to be aware of when you're using merge and center. The final thing to point out when it comes to alignment is if you notice in the corner of the alignment group, we have this diagonal arrow. As we've already seen, this opens up more settings for this particular group of tools. So it's going to jump us across to the alignment tab. And once again, we have some text alignment options in here, but we have a few more. So when it comes to horizontal alignment, We've got left, center, right, we have fill, we have justify, center across selection, so on and so forth. So a few more options in there. We also have the same for our vertical alignment. We have top, center, bottom, justify, and distributed. In the text control group, again, we have wrap text. That's the same as clicking the button that we have on the ribbon. We also have something called shrink to fit. So let me show you what that does. Again, we're gonna use column P Let's make this quite a bit narrower. If I was to select this column and go back into my alignment tools and choose shrink to fit, check out what happens to the text in these cells when we click on OK. You can see what it does. It actually shrinks the font size so that each item fits in the cell and you don't have to change that column width. Now, I don't particularly like this option because again, it gives you very inconsistent font sizes, but just remember that that option is there. There might be a time when you need to use it. We can also do things like change the text direction in here. So the default is left to right. You could choose to have this right to left. And then finally over on the side here, this is where you can change your orientation. So again, if we were dealing with the headings in this document, let's select the top row go back into our alignment options, I could choose to rotate these headings 45 degrees, click on OK, and it's gonna give us the same effect as choosing angle counterclockwise from this dropdown. So remember, a lot of the things that you see in these additional options areas are repeats of what we already have in the ribbon, but in some instances, you will have more options in here as well. Now I'm gonna take this back to a zero degree rotation and click on OK. And I'm also going to remove shrink to fit and click on OK again. Now the final thing to point out here is, as we've mentioned previously, the default is for all text to be aligned to the left-hand side of the cell and for numbers or values to be aligned to the right. And you can see evidence of this in columns Q to U. These cells contain text and values. We have text in the header, which is aligned to the left, and we have values in the column, and those are aligned to the right. And how these numbers are aligned against each other are very much controlled by the number formatting that you have in play. So I have accounting formatting selected for these cells, and that means that all of my numbers are going to line up at the decimal place. It also means that the currency symbol is gonna be pushed all the way over to the left-hand side of the cell, keeping it out of the way of the actual number. And this formatting, this accounting format, has been specifically created for accountants who have to read down long lists of numbers. Remember the other type of formatting that we have is currency, and you'll find that with currency format, you have the dollar symbol pushed right up against the number, and in a lot of cases, the decimal places won't necessarily always line up. So again, remember with numbers, the type of formatting that you have applied to them can also affect their alignment. But aside from all of that, that is pretty much all there is to aligning text and values within cells in your worksheet. Congratulations on reaching the end of this training video. Continue your training in Excel 365 for beginners with the next video in the series by clicking over here. For more related training videos, click over here to watch this popular playlist of free learning resources. To see more videos like this one, click below to subscribe.